Did you know that India's constitution officially acknowledges not one, but two names for this diverse and vibrant nation? On the global stage, India stands as the universally recognized moniker, employed in English and an array of international languages. However, within the heart of the nation, Bharath takes center stage as the other official name, resonating beautifully in the Hindi language. The coexistence of these two names, India and Bharath, within the country's official framework, reflects the richness of its linguistic and cultural tapestry. The choice between them often hinges on the context and the language that paints the backdrop of the conversation. A nation's name isn't merely a label, it's a tapestry interwoven with cultural, historical, and political threads, enriching its identity. Country names can for example trace their origin to the grandeur of ancient empires, the luminosity of illustrious figures from their past, or the landscapes they encompass. Take, for instance, Egypt, which draws its name from the ancient Greek word Aegyptos, echoing the profound significance of the Nile River Valley that has sustained its existence throughout its history. Many countries have also undergone name changes due to historical events or shifts in identity. For example, Myanmar changed its name from Burma in 1989. Now, turning to the question of dual names for India. Why is it known by both India and Bharat? For this, we need to navigate back through time to understand the origins of both these names and their respective historical journeys to the present day. The name Bharat is deeply rooted in the rich history and culture of India, serving as an important symbol of the nation's identity. Its origins can be traced back to ancient Sanskrit texts and mythological narratives. One of the earliest references to Bharat can be found in the ancient Indian epic, the Mahabharat. This epic, composed over 2,000 years ago, narrates the Great War of Kurukshetra and the events surrounding it. In the Mahabharat, Bharat was the name of a legendary emperor, who ruled over a vast kingdom that included much of the Indian subcontinent. His name, Bharat, is believed to have been derived from the Sanskrit word signifying someone who is dedicated to the path of righteousness and enlightenment. Emperor Bharat is considered the epitome of righteousness and was the progenitor of the Bharata dynasty. Furthermore, the name Bharatvasha was used to refer to the Indian subcontinent in ancient texts. The term Bharatvasha is believed to have been used as early as the Rigveda, one of the oldest sacred texts of India, composed over 3,000 years ago. In the Vishnu Purana, Bharatvasha is depicted as a sacred and spiritually significant land. It is described as the region situated to the north of the ocean and to the south of the Himalayan mountains, encompassing a vast and diverse landscape that includes mountains, rivers, forests, and plains. The country that lies north of the ocean and south of the snowy mountains is called Bharatam, there dwell the descendants of Bharat. Bharat Vasha holds a central place in Hindu cosmology and mythology, as it is believed to be the dwelling place of numerous revered sages, deities, and sacred rivers like the Ganges and Yamuna. The concept of Bharat as a sacred and united land continued through various periods of Indian history. The name Bharat also has historical and cultural significance in various Indian languages. In Hindi and many other Indian languages, Bharat is the native name for India. This name reflects the enduring connection between the nation's history, culture, and its ancient roots. Now what about the origins of the name India? In the verses of the Rigveda, the term Sindhu emerges like a recurring motif, painting a vivid picture of the mighty Indus River and the sprawling land it nourished. 
It's in these ancient verses that the name India takes its first steps. But the story takes an intriguing turn when we journey into the linguistic world of ancient Persia. Imagine the transformation as the Persians, with their unique pronunciation, swapped the S for an H, thus, Sindhul evolved into Hindu. Notably, in this context, Hindu didn't denote a religion, but rather refers to the land or the country itself. Now, etched into a rocky cliff on Mount Bahistan in present day, Iran stands an ancient cuneiform inscription attributed to the venerable King Darius I of Persia. Within these inscribed characters, a single word gleams through the ages, Hindu. It's here, in this historical artifact, that we find a clear reference to the region we now know as India. Forward. Let us take up arms, let us rush together to Hindush. When the Persian term Hindu was encountered by ancient Greeks, it was transliterated into the Greek script, which could sometimes result in phonetic changes. The Persian H sound, for example, often became an I or E sound in Greek. Thus came the word India or Indoi. Over time, India was adopted by various cultures and languages. One significant turning point in the adoption of the name India was the arrival of Alexander the Great in the Indian subcontinent in the 4th century BCE. Greek and later Roman accounts of Alexander's conquests and the lands he encountered contributed to the spread of the term India in Western literature. Herodotus, an ancient Greek historian often referred to as the father of history, provided descriptions of India and its neighboring regions in his work The Histories during the 5th century BCE. Of all the possessions of mankind, the use of India's rivers is known to be most conducive to the increase of wealth. Marco Polo, the Venetian explorer who traveled extensively in Asia during the 13th century, also referred to the country in his writings primarily as India or the Kingdom of India. The name India gained even more prominence during the colonial period when the British East India Company established its presence on the subcontinent in the 17th century. The British referred to their territorial holdings as British India, and this term became widely accepted. By the time of the British Raj, which began in the mid-19th century, the name India had become firmly associated with the entire subcontinent. In 1947, when India gained independence from British colonial rule, the term Bharath was officially adopted as the name of the country, alongside its other name, India. The Constitution of India, adopted in 1950, recognizes both names as acceptable, reflecting the nation's diverse linguistic and cultural heritage. Article 1 of the Indian Constitution deals with the official name of the country and its union of states. India, that is Bharat, shall be a union of states. So what are your thoughts? Leave a comment, like and subscribe. Throughout history, the name India has been used by outsiders to describe the country, beginning with the Persians, followed by the Greeks, and finally the British. The name reverberates on a global scale, influencing diplomacy, trade, and tourism alike. Meanwhile, Bharat stands as the nation's self-proclaimed identity, a name that resonates with the very heartbeat of the land.